What's up guys, Pluskin here, and today I want to talk about one of my most favorite parts about gaming, which I also feel is one of the most underappreciated parts of gaming, and that is bonus content. A good game will always be a good game, but a great game is something that rewards you for coming back to it. And I feel bonus content in any form is always going to be a kind of reward for, you know, staying true to the experience and playing through the entire game and coming back after. It's like a thank you from the developers for enjoying everything that they literally worked hours upon hours to create. And I think that's wonderful. So today I want to talk about different kinds of bonus content, why they're so great, and why I feel every game should strive to include something to incentivize you to come back to it. And not in the unhealthy, oh yeah, we need a battle pass and a live service multiplayer. No, 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 I mean something more tangible, something you can work for, not pay extra for. Got a long way to go. Now, of course, the easiest kind of bonus content to talk about would be unlockables. You see this almost everywhere. But most recently, I've loved it in Resident Evils 3 and 8. 3, of course, I'm talking about the remake, even though the original also had crazy bonus content. Now, luckily, one of the things that didn't get lost in translation was bonus content for the remake. Now, while there's only one outfit that you can earn by replaying the game or finishing the game once, there's another outfit that you can buy, but I'm not, I appreciate that, like DLC and all that kind of stuff, but when I'm talking about bonus content, I'm talking about stuff that's already in there. So, yeah, even though the remake definitely cuts down on the outfits you can wear, I have to say being able to unlock the classic outfit for Jill and seeing the little cute girl walking around in her little cute hat is really fucking fun. But it goes so much more beyond that. You unlock bonus weapons, which add alternative ways to play through the game. Now, normally I'm a strickler with the sandbox and its purity. However, when you're replaying a game, I'm totally up for there being bonus weapons that add slight variations to weapons that you've gotten used to. For example, in this game here, you normally go through the entire campaign using your Glock 19 pistol. It's a decent mid-range jack-of-all-trades, however, when you beat the game, you earn points. Now, these points can go towards unlocking a whole bunch of things, two of those things being two new pistols that act slightly different. One of them is the classic Beretta M92 from the original Resident Evil games, which acts much in the same way as the Glock, however, now it's more so about scoring critical hits rather than shot placement, so you can just empty out into a zombie's body and still take it down much quicker than you would if you did that with a Glock. With the Glock, you really need to worry about your headshots and such. But then you can also get a unlimited ammo USP that's significantly weaker than the both of them, yet will save you space because now you don't have to carry around 9mm ammo. So it's new kind of modifiers almost for repeat playthroughs, and that's pretty freaking great. But it goes even further, like you can unlock a like special fire knife to use on zombies, I'm not good enough to use it, but goddamn does this look cool. You can unlock an infinite ammo rocket launcher, which I mean, easy mode unlocks are always fun, you know, you struggle through a game on a hard difficulty and then you get a weapon that lets you breeze through it, that is a power trip every time. Then there's these like coins that modify your health or your damage output, it's pretty freaking great. But I feel like this is much better exemplified, or it gets taken to the next level, in the Resident Evil 8. In Resident Evil 8, parts of the sandbox are actually locked out from you because you need to achieve them after you play through the game. So there's a perfect level up system here, however a lot of the guns that are in that level up system you're supposed to find on repeat playthroughs. and how. You know, they'll revolutionize the sandbox. For example, the way you use shotguns in your first playthrough is going to be very different when you're playing through the game on harder difficulties and unlock guns like the assault rifles or the gyrojet pistol. The shotgun starts becoming less of a crowd control weapon and more of a space creating weapon between you and an opponent that's just getting too close. So it reworks the sandbox by all of these unlocked weapons, recontextualizing the way things work, without destroying the purity of its level up system. 
trust me, we're going to talk about Resident Evil 8 Sandbox in great detail at a later date. But yeah, what makes this so much greater is that unlike Resident Evil 3 Remake, there's so many more things you can do to actually earn these points. Yes, you can play through the game, but now you have Mercenaries mode. You also have a DLC campaign, and all of these things will give you points through this achievement system here, which in of itself acts as bonus content because it gives you new side objectives to go throughout the game. And once you get these points, you can spend them to get these items, and it's like everything you're doing in the game, no matter what it is, contributes to getting you more of these points to get more of these guns, upgrades, concept arts, whatever it's freaking brilliant it's like a modern version of what halo reach did where whether you're playing forge firefight multiplayer campaign you're getting points to unlock new armor resident evil 8 just does this for all of its bonus content not armor because there's no armor in the game but weapons concept art a new like mercenaries mode a ton of stuff it's great so unlockables again are like the most basic form of bonus content, but it's pretty gratifying because it gives you reasons to go back, spices up the gameplay, and unlocks new ways of play. But there's more ways that you can include bonus content into your game. We've talked many times before about map editors and how great they are. And now in Halo Infinite, we have the new Forge mode which is excellent. Map editors allow you to create new experiences for yourself. Now, I always talked about Far Cry 4's map editor because you could put AI in it and really create your own kind of situations that didn't show up in the campaign, so you kind of create DLC for the game. But Halo Infinite's Forge is well on the way to doing that, and the fact that it's doing it with Halo immediately puts it up. So I've spent hours working on maps testing them and then going back and reworking them i start thinking like a multiplayer map designer i start thinking about balance i start seeing okay how do people exploit my map what exactly are they doing that breaks it how do i make this more balanced does it feel fair to the losing team when they lose and every time i see something that goes wrong or goes outside my vision my vision changes a little bit to counter that so i'm constantly adding and perfecting these maps and that is a lot of fun because it's not the campaign it's not the core multiplayer it's just a bonus mode where i can create and creation is like the ultimate fun i mean do you guys remember bionicles teams taught you how to defend yourself with the kodak blaster yeah, it was fun to create what it said to make in the manual, but afterwards, eventually, all of us started just taking Bionicle pieces and creating monstrosities out of our own imagination. That was so much fun, and Forge is like a modern version of that. And that's really fucking cool. And the best part is, it's disconnected to the main game, so even if there's live service bullshit, or the campaign's not getting shit added to it, or whatever controversy's happening at 343 nowadays, I can ignore all that and just keep creating my own experiences. So it's like separated from all the issues with the company. As long as I have access to this forge, I have almost all the bonus content I would ever need, and if they add more to it, that's only gonna get better. So yeah, map creators or just any kind of bonus content that lets you create something. This goes to character creators. Like in the older WWE games, I still play WWE 2K 2010 and create different characters. It lets me create their movesets, their entrances. I can build a wrestler from the ground up. So naturally I create Kiryu Kazuma, Leon Kennedy, and Venom Snake. And then I customize their movesets to be true to their characters. This has kept me playing an otherwise average game for almost 20 years now. So creation modes, whether it's a map, whether it's a character, whether it's a moveset, if you allow the player to generate their own content, they'll just create bonus content till the end of time. I'm living proof of that. For our last category, I want to talk about secrets, secret rooms specifically. Now, this is an area that you're not really supposed to discover by going with the natural flow of the game. 
However, if you stumble across it or unlock or beat the game, you get a new accessible area that's there for players that really put a lot of time into this. And while I can think of a lot of examples of this kind of stuff, especially with like older retro games like Doom and Shadow Warrior, the one that's always stuck out to me, it always will, will be Haunting Ground Secret Room. Now the way to find this is actually quite easy, you just have to beat the game. Once you do, you get kind of an interactable menu. You get this room where if you want to access the different animations for all the character rigs, if you want to see all the concept art, the cutscenes, listen to the music, check out the costumes, or even play a secret bonus minigame, you go to different areas of this room and interact with different paintings, doorways, and such and such. Even to leave the room, you don't pause and exit through a menu, you walk out one of the doors. This interactable space is really cool because it's a way of delivering bonus content that would otherwise be in like boring list form, and here it's like a playable environment. And that's why this is my favorite secret room, even though it's not technically something you have to search out for in a level or some crazy easter egg or something like that. It just takes the idea of delivering bonus content and does it in such a cool, immersive, yet still fourth wall breaking way. Now at this point here, I could keep talking and talking about, oh, what about bonus game modes? What about Easter eggs? What about this? What about that? And honestly, I'd rather leave that up to you guys. Do you have a type of bonus content that you love? Talk about it down in the comments below. Are there certain games you've heard me talk about, but I haven't mentioned certain elements of bonus content for them? By all means, let me know what to look for. You guys bring that up. I just wanted to talk about this video and talk about this topic because I wanted to bring out what I love about bonus content, examples of how I've seen it be implemented, and just kind of just remind everyone that we should really appreciate this stuff when we come across it. There's so many games that release nowadays that are not even finished. So the fact that you can get games that are complete and have all these secret unlockables, bonuses, and whatever for you to discover on repeat playthroughs or outside of the main game, I think that's wonderful and that's one of the things that makes video games special. You don't really get that when you go to see a movie in theaters and you don't really get that when you read a book, but with video games, you can sneak all this stuff in there and it feels right at home. So yeah, I've been Pliskin and that's why I love bonus content. Now here's David Hayter telling you how cool I am. This is Solid Snake. Hey. Subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him. Really, really quick, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot to add this in here, but a really good example of how Resident Evil 3 Remake does bonus content is even in the ways that you select difficulty. If you play the game on normal or higher, when you come across this kind of enemy and Jill kills them, she'll either say nothing or some random line like this. But then if you play the game on assisted or easy mode, and she comes across this enemy and you manage to shoot them in their weak point, she'll tell you that's their weak point. Like this. And there's multiple little differences like that between the normal or higher difficulties and the easier difficulty where the easy difficulty will actually have the characters guide you through the game with things that they say. And it's little details and bonuses like that and attention to detail, even in something as different as how do we make easy mode immersively easier. This kind of stuff just makes me realize, yeah, this, th this thing, I, I really like this thing. This thing does a really good job at everything that it tries to do. I love this.